Christmas, Merry Christmas. Um, new hat, Dallas Cowboys, because I am a big Dallas Cowboys fan. I'm also a huge 49er fan, which is really tough because they're both in the NFC. If you watch football, and you understand that. Um, and it's, I'm sorry, I loved seeing them win yesterday. It was awesome. Um, and so far today, I'm one for two. So we're waiting on the third game to see if I, if, if who I want to win wins that one. And I'll give you it ain't Tampa Bay, <laughs> even though I live in the area. So anyway, I hope you have had a fabulous Christmas. I hope it's been wonderful if you celebrate. And if you don't, I still, I hope you've had a wonderful Sunday. I wanted to come on here with, you know, a little Sunday night encouragement because I started doing that a couple of weeks ago. And since it happens to be Christmas, I think it should be focused on, you know, some gratitude and things. You know, I, it me very long, then you know, I love gratitude. I think gratitude is just like so cool because there's so much to be grateful for every single day. And I, I there's there's a there's a Christmas song that's like if every day could be like Christmas, which I've always thought that would be so cool, be so cool because I love Christmas. And the thing is, it can be. It can be if we're grateful. If we show real gratitude, not just oh I'm grateful for today. Grateful for my family, you know, just, which I, I'm all for saying it. I'm all for saying the affirmations, you know, I mean, sometimes all you can do is say thank you. Um, I think it was Albert Einstein said he says thank you a hundred times a day for the scientist who went before him. So, I mean, I, I do believe that it's fine. To, I mean, a lot of times I go to my mailbox and as I go, well, I go every day. And as I walk to my mailbox, I say thank you with every step. Or sometimes it's from the sofa to the refrigerator and back. I say thank you with every step because it's fine to just say thank you. It's even better if you can say what you're grateful for, you know. Thank you for the air that I breathe. And why? Because it keeps me alive. It's even better if you can get really deep with your thank yous and get specific. And I caught myself this week making two things, kind of saying two comments that I don't normally say, and one was, I was complaining about this weather. I don't like to complain. And I'm not going to say I never complain, because, you know, we all complain it sometimes. But I was really complaining about the weather, because, you know, I'm in Florida, and I do have clothes for 30-degree weather. I do, for the simple fact that I've, you know, I travel. And I I went to Iceland a couple of years ago, and I went to Scotland, and, you know, it, it was kind of chilly in Scotland. So, I mean, I had another coat I had. So I have my Iceland gear and then I have my Scotland gear and I'm planning a trip to Alaska early next year. So, you know, my Iceland gear will come in handy again. So I was like, I have clothing for this. So why am I complaining about the weather? And I also realized that I had a lot to be grateful for regarding this weather. And I'm going to show you one of those things. And for those of you who have been around, this is not my cat pie racket. Want to say hello? You want to say hello? This is his father, Pie Daddy. And Pie Daddy is an out, has been an outdoor cat for 12 years. I've been feeding him for 12 years. And prior to feeding him, I fed, well, I, I also fed his, his wife, <laughs> pie, pie, my cat, Pie Racket's mother. And she passed away a long time ago. And prior to feeding the two of them, and by the way, Pie Wacket's mother was probably also this one's sister, sister and wife, you know, it's cats. And prior to that, I fed their parents, who were also um, black cats with a bobtail. So they're all black, you know, black manxes. And prior to that, their mother. So, I mean, I fed three generations. So since about 2007, I have been feeding these black cats outside. I also had them all fixed. And my cat ended up, he ended up my cat because of the fact that he was so young when I caught him, because I would catch them, have them fixed, and then release them back to the neighborhood and feed them. And he was so young that I couldn't have him fixed yet. And I couldn't let him go because I knew if I let him go, I'd never catch him again. So that's how he ended up being my indoor cat. And then he ran twice. So right after I had him declawed, declawed, front ones, and fixed, he ran. And he came back both times. First time he came back because he was hungry. Second time he came back because he did something to one of his claws on the back, on one of his back paws, and it won't retract. But this one is now 12. And you may have seen a story I posted last on the 15th that he kind of walked in 
and made me put his dinner down there. And he ate, and he laid down for about 30 minutes. Well, he went back outside. I fed him again later, and so on and so on. And I had been feeding him dry food for all these years. Well, he, I had noticed a couple of weeks ago, ouch, sorry, he's got a claw into me, um, that he was just staring at his food, so I got him wet food. And that's what I was feeding him on the 15th, and maybe that's why he came inside, was to say thanks for the wet food, because it was easier. Well, then I noticed as he walked up on the 19th, Monday of this past week, his abdomen was distended, and it really freaked me out. So I called the vet and talked to the vet about it, and I also went online, of course, and, and Googled everything in the world and looked up all kinds of things. And he was still outside. And then on Thursday, Thursday the 22nd, he came waddling up, belly greatly extended. It had not been distended, distended, not extended. It had not been distended like that on Monday. I mean, it might have been a little bit, but not like this. This looked like he swallowed a full-size NFL football. And so I took him to the vet. I called them on the way, <laughs> and since I live five minutes from there, I barely got off the phone when I got there. They took him in, and they've told me two or three things it could be. His abdomen is filled with fluid. They drain the fluid, but also told me that was you know, treating the symptoms. So if you know anything about cats and you dealt with this, I'd love to hear the comments. In the, in, I'd love to hear, hear some information in the comments where you can DM me. Um, they're worried about a thing called PIF. I don't think that's it because... Online and everything, it says diarrhea is a symptom, and, and that's definitely not an issue. Yes, there's not an issue. They, it could be cancer, which could really could be. So I kept him in the house. They kind of wanted him um, quarantined in case it was this PIF thing. So I, and I don't have to worry about my cat because Pie Daddy, I mean, sorry, Pie, my cat Pie, doesn't like any other cats. So he's hiding ever since this cat's been in here. I do keep him in the bathroom like at night so he's not roaming and then when I'm gone. But when I'm home, started this started woo, Friday, in fact, I called the vet and I was scared to death. I was like, this is not working. Then by because he hadn't even urinated. By Saturday he did. Um so I, I decided I didn't need to take him to the vet. Um but I'm very worried that frankly, you know, I've been feeding him for twelve years and now we may be down to me just giving him a little bit of love for 12 days. In those 12 years, this is the catch, in those 12 years, he's never let me touch him. Mm -mm, never. Every time I, I'd put the food down and I'd sit there and try to talk to him and he would sit down and look at me as if to say, you're dismissed. You can, as soon as you go in, I'll eat. So would you please go in? If I reached to touch him, he, he went back. He would always move backwards. It was like Wednesday of this week when he walked up that I accidentally, accidentally brushed up against him. He jerked at first, and then he kind of sat down and leaned into my hand. It was the weirdest thing. Um, and right now he's sitting in my lap with his head down. You know, He's much more of a lap cat in these two days, these few days, than my cat's ever been in, in 11 years. Pi is not a lap cat. Um, this little guy, I'm pretty sure, is on his last legs. But I am feeding him, and I'm feeding him good stuff, and his bodily move, you know, his, his, you know, defecating and urination has increased. So that's a good thing. <laughs> maybe it's, you know, maybe it's a great thing. I don't know. But he still just lays around. He's so, I mean, he's, and I realized after he started letting me touch him, he's bony as can be. I mean, his little ribs, I can feel his little ribs. It's terrible. And, and I feel so bad that I didn't notice it before. I just, you know, I thought he was old, but he never would let me get close to him. So that was part of it. So I, I comfort myself with that. But my whole point of this whole story is that if it had not been for the cold weather, I wouldn't have been looking for him to do this. Because, you know, when he stepped in the other day, I was like, you know what? This cat's old, and if he gets stuck on this cold weather, I don't think he'll make it. So I was kind of watching for him a lot more because of it. And when he came in the other day, I have a screen room, and I have a heater out there, and I was trying to show it to him and I took I he let me pick him up I got closer to him and I petted him and he was like okay with this and he just kind of laid down and I picked him up no problem and I carried him out there and I was showing him like I got a heater here I got gave him a little pallet you know put some food out made a little litter box whole bit 
while I was doing that, he kind of walked back into <laughs> back into my house. And that was on Wednesday. And then he went back out and he went out the back door. It took him two hours to get around to, I guess this was maybe this was Thursday. Maybe this was Thursday. And anyway, whichever day, he, it took him two hours to get around to the front of my house. And that's, you know, when I was like, he took about five, he would take five steps and lay down. Four or five steps and lay down. So I decided that I'm very grateful, like I said, for this cold weather because if it, if we weren't having freezing temperatures, I would not have worried so much. And I wouldn't have, here, you want to lay back down. Here you go. I wouldn't have worried so much and I wouldn't have been looking for them. Now there's two other strays out there, but they're much younger. And I, only, I don't see them very often. I actually saw one the other day, um, the uh, black tabby, black and gray tabby. The orange tabby I haven't seen in Couple, several weeks. Uh, I think some of them go to other houses. They obviously go to other houses and eat. But he has never, this one's never liked people. Um, which was probably a smart thing because that way he didn't get caught. So anyway, I decided I'm very grateful for the cold weather because it let him come into my house. It let me be able to take care of him even if it is for only a couple of weeks. And he's so cute. He purrs like crazy. He does the little making biscuits thing, you know. Um, much more so than my than, than Pie. My cat that lives in the house all the time and sleeps in my bed and doesn't let me touch him. <laughs> don't pet me. Don't pet me. Don't pet me. And then it's like, okay, you can pet my head. Don't hug. No, I don't want to be picked up. Oh, my God, you picked me up. That's how Pie is. This one is like, I pick him up and he puts his head down. He just starts purring like crazy. So... You know, I'm, I'm thinking, like I said, I'm probably going to give him maybe the 12 days of where he actually has human contact and has a little animal-human bonding, and it's, it's such a sweet, sweet thing. So that's why I'm grateful for the cold weather. The other thing I did is when I took him to the vet the other day, and, you know, they did an x-ray. They had to send the x-ray out to a radiologist to make sure it wasn't that he wasn't have fluid from the heart and everything. And that's all the radiologist said was basically it's not his heart. I'm not sure what it is because there's so much fluid you can't really tell. They drain fluid. And what else did they do? Well, I guess just a general checkup. And I looked at him at one point and went, you're costing me an arm and a leg. Which, you know, I think, I mean, I had had him fixed years ago, which did not cost much because I was going through a local, um, another catch and release group and they had put me in contact with a vet that only charged like $30 to fix the cats if they were strays. So never thought about it. And of course I've never been able to get him into a vet in all these years, but I caught myself saying that. I was like, you're costing me an arm and a leg. And then I went, well, if I'd been bringing him to the vet every year, I'd probably be about this much. <laughs> this is about where I'd be. And I don't like saying that because that's a negative state, you know, I say it's a negative statement about money. I know there's nothing good or bad, but thinking, <coughs> but thinking makes it so. And that sounded negative to me, so I didn't want to say that. And I just decided, you know, after I said it, I was like, I apologize. I didn't mean to say that, Pie Daddy. That, that's what I call him, because like I said, he's Pie's father. And so I just said, you know, you're just, we're getting all your vet bills in one year here, because I have a feeling there's going to be another vet bill, like I said, coming in a couple of weeks, because I'm not going to let him suffer. Um, I'm waiting for the doctors to find out if it is this PIF thing because they took some of the fluid and they sent it off to a lab. Um, like I said, I don't think it is, but it could very well be a tumor. And so the next step would be an ultrasound and then possibly surgery. And he weighed, when they weighed him, and this is, they'd weighed him before they removed fluids and they removed 500 milliliters of fluid. He weighed seven pounds. And that's with all the fluid. So I don't personally think he could survive a surgery so like I said I'm not gonna let him suffer and it's weird because I have I have an uncle in hot who went into hospice last week I have my best friend's mother went into hospice earlier this week and I feel like the cat is here with me in hospice so so I said it was just full disclosure of we all make these mistakes even though I teach money mindset and I talk about language a lot I still said it cost me an arm and a leg the good news about that is, though, is that I, I caught it. And I caught that one almost, almost immediately. It was about two seconds after I said it that I went, oh, I shouldn't have said that. As far as the 
hating the cold weather comments that I was making and how awful it was. That took me a couple of days. I mean, because, well, I guess it was last night that I caught it. So not a couple of days. I guess it was about 15 hours <laughs> of, compl of saying it that I caught it and realized that if it weren't for how cold it was, I wouldn't have this precious little creature in here. So see, there's always something that no matter how bad things are, there's always something to be grateful for. It's, you know, your, your problems, your heartaches, your disappointments, your discouragements, it's all an opportunity if you look for it. But you do have to look for the opportunity. I mean, maybe the opportunity is, some, is to learn something. Maybe the opportunity is to help somebody else, like I'm helping out this cat. You know, maybe the opportunity is simply to go through something so that you can make changes in your own life. There's always an opportunity, though. You just have to look for it. Because if you don't, you end up dwelling on things that you can't do anything about or you end up repeating the lesson. You know, you gotta repeat the lesson until you learn it. So that's my actual, that's where I'm really going with this encouragement is two things. One, be grateful, be grateful for everything. And if you're journaling, then get specific about what you're grateful for and why you're grateful for it. It's 10,000 ways to do, to do gratitude rituals. So, and I'm not gonna tell you which ones you have to do because you know, it's already do. But there's all kinds of different ways. But at least once in a while, write down and get really specific about it. And research has shown that writing it is so much better than just speaking it. But if all you're doing is speaking it, then speak it with, with all the specifics. Use your phone. You know, use your the voice, uh, the, voice, the voice notes thing, the voice memos, or even speak it into your notes. Either way. It works wonders. And the second thing is, if you catch yourself making negative comments about finances and money and rich people or whatever, and it's easy to do at this time of the year, or, you know, about your bills as they come due in January, which is easy to do also, turn it around. Change it. Because there's always something to be grateful for, and there's always good, and there's always opportunities. So that's my Sunday night encouragement for this Christmas night. I hope again that you have had a very Merry Christmas if you celebrate. And even if you don't celebrate, I hope you've had a very Merry, fantastic Sunday. And I look forward to seeing you again next week right here for some Sunday night encouragement. And Tuesday, I'll be, ooh, excuse me, Tuesday, I'll be live talking about something to do with money. So have a great night. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.